Hi guys, Tony Dubbed here and today I'm doing a video review on the Samsung AKG VL5 smart speaker. And you'll know why I'm doing this in just a while. Now, this speaker isn't cheap. It can be found for around £600, which puts it across a lot of competition, especially in the smart speaker range. You've got things from like Ultimate Ears' Mega Boom uh, 3 to um, Apple's HomePod uh, to even Name Audio's uh, smart speakers as well. So let's see how this compares. Now, I would like to point out that I'm going to be talking about the design and build quality and then also uh, talking about its sound quality and giving you a little demo as well. So first off, let's talk about the build quality. Now the speaker itself is very elegant, but I just want to show you the back first. And the reason why is because it comes up with this sort of uh, magnetic um, sort, of, uh, sort of like a, a panel, uh, which uh, showcases its inputs. Now you've got the uh, DC power input. Now bear in mind this is a white cable. I'm sure you get the appro appropriate uh, cable when uh, you actually um, if you actually bought the uh, black model. Uh, this, this speaker is available in black and white, uh, should I point out, so that's probably why you've got a white cable, but nevertheless, um, at the back, you've got an ethernet port, you've got 3.5 millimeter jack uh, auxiliary as well, um, and then in terms of wireless connectivity, you've got Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Now, in order to access these things, um, not only can you plug, uh, plug ethernet, for example, or auxiliary through here, but you can also choose the input uh, via these uh, touch buttons. Now, if I were to press it, Wi-Fi, aux. There's that sort of audible to tone um, that's done. So it's pretty simple and very easy uh, to uh, interact with. The connection is complete. There you go. And then you've got this sort of a little white LED at the top right hand side of the speaker. Um, top right and top you've got a, a play pause um, touch button as well uh, and sort of a volume dial which is all touch based which is quite uh, nice to see and as you can see uh, it interacts with it and gives you sort of an audible tone when it's being moved. Um, what is the most important uh, thing about all of this is it's sort of like wireless puck. Um, the reason I like this is, well, there's quite a few things I like about it. First of all, uh, in terms of its design, it's got a sort of clicky volume. so. And to me, that's really cool. Uh, and this is a wireless one as well. So you can take it as long as this is in Bluetooth range with the actual main unit as in the speaker, uh, then you can have it wherever you want. So as an example, I actually used this uh, place next to the TV and then had this whilst I was cooking um, and it was actually stuck on my oven and I was just controlling the volume. So I didn't have to interact with that. Uh, and also because um, of its design, it is magnetic as well. That is pretty cool. I know it's really simple and really uh, silly it might seem, but the magnetic design means that it can go pretty much anywhere that has a metallic surface. Now in terms of buttons as well, you've got the volume dial as I mentioned over here with a nice sort of clicky feeling to it. Um, and all the rest of them are done by this uh, center button as well. There's LEDs which depict what's going on, um, so you'll have to look in the manual for all of those, but nevertheless, there's, if you press it once, it plays and you can pause it. If you double uh, tap, it um, goes to next song. Triple tap goes back. Hold it down for two seconds and activate your voice assist uh, assistant. Now the voice assistant is not built into the speaker. In other words, when I said smart speaker, it's because it doesn't have Amazon, Ale um, Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, Siri, Bixby, or whatever it might be built into it. Instead, it uses the one that's on your phone. So if you're on iOS, you'll have Siri. If you're on a Samsung phone and you're using Bixby, it'll be Bixby. If you're using a Google Android phone, it will be Google Assistant. Uh, and if you have an Amazon Alexa, so for example, if you've got like a Echo Dot, let's for example say there's the Echo Dot and you have a 3.5 mil jack, going at the back of it, then it'll be Amazon Alexa. So no matter what it is, it will interact with any of the voice assistants, but doesn't have one built in. So it's a bit strange because most smart speakers actually have a built-in voice assistant, but that's not the case with the Samsung VL5. So bear that in mind. In terms of voice, now just bear in mind that you will need this to be relatively close to you because the microphone is located on here, but on the plus side, you don't need your phone on you. So 
as long as the phone is in Bluetooth range with the speaker or placed next to the speaker, and then this is in Bluetooth range with the actual main unit, then all you'll need to do is interact with this. So the voice will, command will go via this, which will go then via the speaker, which will then go via your phone. It's all done within an instant, so don't worry, there's not like a, a massive lag or delay, but just bear that in mind. And yes, of course, you cannot do a sort of um, a voice triggering. It won't do like, hey Google, and whatever it might be. It won't do it. You will need to interact with this little wireless puck by pressing it down for two seconds. Now the speaker itself interacts with the Smart Things app, and that's what really makes it smart, simply because it can interact with uh, your other Samsung connected devices. So bear in mind you will need a Samsung device in order to have that, or as I said before, Amazon Alexa plugged in, but in order to group them and have like sort of a, a, like a home, you will need to have other Samsung devices. So for example, Samsung Soundbar and Samsung uh, TV, which I've got in the background. Now within uh, the actual, um, settings there's a few things you can go through so for example you it will filter your music so uh, right here i was playing via a uh, power amp uh, amigos one time and i can actually um play pause um, skip previous via this uh, via this app rather than going via power amp but you know whichever you would, would prefer you can adjust the volume but it's also the bluetooth volume as you can see it's being adjusted at the system volume uh, over there and then you've got music services now music services on unfortunate type of making this video it's only deezer and tune in i would have liked to see tidal spotify amazon music uh, included within that list it would have been a much more comprehensive list especially as most of its competitors such as like say Sonos uh, include all of those. There's equalizer setting which I've left to none but you can have preset equalizers if you so wish. Then you've got the sleep timer which can have an on and off sort of um, time. Just to bear in mind that there is no on and off switch on the actual speaker itself so to switch it off just let it go idle and then it will automatically go on standby and then when you come to pair up your phone again it will automatically pick up again. So other than that, uh, the app doesn't really provide any other options other than having it sort of um, uh, pairing up with um, other sort of Samsung devices. So let's talk about sound quality. Now, without further ado, I'm going to play the song and then we're going to be talking about the actual sound quality attributes. <laughs> So what you heard right there was two royalty-free music that you can find on YouTube. Now my problem over here was the fact that I was transmitting over Bluetooth. Now Bluetooth over here doesn't have APTX codec or any sort of advanced codec other than the SBC, which means that you're sort of limited in terms of the overall transmission. What does that matter? Well, simply because it will affect the overall sound quality that you're going to be getting. However, with that aside, um, and even with the YouTube compression, and also the fact that you are listening over a camera, I do want to share my opinion, and the fact that the AKG VL5 was actually very impressive. In fact, I would go as far as saying it's among one of the most impressive smart speakers that you can find, simply because its sound quality was very good. Um, throughout the frequency range, I had no sort of complaints, and more so, uh, the overall sound presentation was very impressive. So going through it, you've got the sub bass, has a nice sort of rumble, and of course it's not going to compare with ones that have a dedicated subwoofer. So for example, the HWN850 that I've got in the background right here has its own subwoofer. That is gonna go a lot, um, it's gonna rumble for a, long, a longer time, it's gonna go deeper in terms of its um, um, lower end tones and also going to give you a bigger bit, a mid bass slam which you're going to feel a lot, a lot more. However for a compact system such as the VL5 um, that I've got over here I must say it was very impressive. The mid, uh, the mid bass and the sub bass works very well. Better still this, this smart speaker has um, Samsung's very own um, distortion free cancelling technology. It's quite a mouthful to say but that technology means that the mid bass is always tight. It's not going to be um, uncontrolled, wobbly of any sorts. You're going to get a nice precise sort of tone no matter the volume that you use it at. So very low to extremely high volumes. Moving on to the mids, 
the mids were slightly pushed back and slightly made the uh, the speaker of course like have a warm sort of sound signature but i must say the mids were accurate so even though they were not as accurate as some um, some other speakers out there so for example that the dali catch uh, is a good example or or, or name audios um, um, speaker is an example as well it's not as um, as forward sounding but yet it's still very accurate so no complaints it's just that you should bear that in mind that it's got more of a warm sort of cuddly sort of uh, sound signature in terms of the highs they do roll off at the very top end but it gives you plenty of um, uh, plenty of sparkle plenty of excitement and at not one point was i thinking oh I wish there was a little bit more treble in this. It's also not sibilant and not ear piercingly annoying, so therefore it is quite um, comfortable to listen to for uh, hours on end. In terms of this sound stage, due to its size, it doesn't have much depth, and by depth I mean sound doesn't feel like it's coming from from sort of different levels. However, it did sound very wide, and in terms of instrument separation, I think it was very impressive. And the way it was able to depict sort of left and right sounds and uh, top and bottom sounds, very impressive. It's not quite a Dolby Atmos sort of experience that you're going to get with a soundbar, but it is very much um, involving. So when I put on the Bluetooth with uh, the TV and then watched a movie, I was very impressed. And even when I listened to some, I don't know, old school Dr. Dre, um, there I felt that I was uh, in Compton uh, listening to, listening to um, some, some music. So... I must say it was very much impressive and um, uh, very, very well done by, by Samsung and AKG over here. Um, so overall, in terms of my uh, thoughts on the, the sound, I must say that the VL5 does sound amazing. And it, it's, of course, it's not perfect. It's got a slightly V-shaped sound signature. It's slightly roll off at the top end. It doesn't have a dedicated subwoofer. And all of this can be very critical for some people. And given its price tag of £600, it's not cheap to say the least. So, in terms of sound quality, I must say it's good, it's exactly what I'd expect for a £600 uh, smart speaker. It does outclass the likes of, let's say, the Ultimate Ears uh, Mega Boom and things, which are around £200. So you're paying a, a hefty premium for that uh, extra sound quality, and it's definitely noticeably uh, better. Uh, however, for you to spend that money is really up to you, which really kind of leads me on to my, my verdict, which essentially means that if you've got the budget, then absolutely, this is a great Bluetooth um, Bluetooth smart speaker. But at the same time, I would personally, if I didn't care about space, I'd opt for a soundbar instead. Like Samsung's very own MS750 is absolutely incredible um, in, in terms of how well it reproduces sound. So it just depends on your scenario, depends on where you would need this. I think this is more of a niche type of um, product because it still needs to be powered. Um, it doesn't really have smart functionality built in, as in there's no voice assistant built in to the speaker itself. It's kind of like a, a middleman uh, that, that acts for you, if that makes sense. Um, and of course, it's beautifully designed, and I absolutely love this little wireless thing. And I know it's such a small thing, but this is what's the main interaction you're going to have with a speaker. And the fact that it uh, can magnetically attach to the speaker or any other metallic devices, such as your oven, then it's absolutely brilliant. So I must say, I, I see myself somewhat recommending this if you've got the budget, but at the same time, I do see myself personally uh, opting for an a all-in-one soundbar if you've got the space, or if you want something more portable, going for something like the Ultimate Ears Mega Boom 3, which won't compete in the same sort of um, league as the sound quality you get from the VL5, but in terms of portability, the fact that it's waterproof, the fact that you've got um, uh, smart features built in, so Amazon Alexa, means that you can have that. And sorry, not the Mega Boom, the Mega Blast, should I say. So there's a lot of, of competition and at its price, it's not to say hard to recommend, but I think you're gonna to have to be a certain niche type of person in order to be the right person to just jump at it and be like, this is absolutely the perfect product. If this was cheaper at 400 pounds, for example, I'd actively recommend it to everyone just simply because it does sound absolutely fantastic. So there we go guys, I've been totally dumped. Hopefully you've enjoyed this review. Make sure you give it a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what you think about um, uh, the, the smart speaker and other smart speakers out there and what you would buy if you had 600 pounds or the equivalent in, in dollars. Um, and there we go. All right, guys, take care and bye-bye.